Hello, I'm Vesta Sarfosh Curtis. I'm a curator of Middle Eastern coins at the British Museum, and welcome to my corner. I became really interested in the Parthians because this is the period just after Alexander's conquest of the ancient Near East. Uh, he conquered the Achaemenid Empire in 333 BC. Then for about 100 years, his uh, Macedonian um, generals ruled over the region. And from around 248, you have this sort of uprising of Iranian tribes in the northeast and the formation of a new dynasty. And this dynasty is called the Parthian dynasty and they become really for almost 500 years equals to the Roman Empire and also great opponents of the Romans. Both Rome and Parthia were very interested to control the east-west trade. Um, Parthia's geographical position was quite important. It was placed between uh, India and China in the east and Rome in the west. It controlled the trade routes and had also access in the south to the Persian Gulf. So Rome wanted to conduct active trade with the east and bypass the Parthians, but the Parthians of course didn't want to let their, this unique position go. And this started really the uh, confrontation the reason behind it was basically uh, commercial, economic, and then also political. It, it's actually very similar to what happens today, or what has happened today. I mean, if you go back to the big first confrontation between uh, Parthia and Rome, you find so many modern parallels. Um, there is a battle which caused uh, Rome quite a lot of grief and humiliation, and this was the Battle of Carai in 54, 53 BC. Uh, a Roman general, Crassus, uh, decided against actually the Roman Senate to take the army eastwards, cross the river Euphrates, and confront the Parthian army. Crassus was a very, very wealthy man who wanted to make a name for himself. He was really in competition with Caesar and Pompey. So the Parthian kings asked him, what's actually behind your decision to um, fight against us? Is it a decision taken by Rome, which we can't ignore, or is this a personal decision? Um, if it's the latter, we can come to an amical conclusion, particularly uh, um, on the basis of your um, age. Crassus was 60 years old, which didn't go down very well at all with Crassus. It was quite humiliating. And Crassus sent um, an envoy back saying, I will give you my answer when I reach Seleucia. And Seleucia was an important city in the Parthian Empire near modern uh, Baghdad. The Parthian king Oroda sent an envoy back saying, uh, apparently he turned the palm of his hand around and said, before you uh, reach Seleucia, hair will grow in the palm of my hands. And of course, Crassus never uh, reached Seleucia. The Romans received a humiliating defeat by the Parthians and uh, they lost their standards. And one of the reasons why this happened was that the Parthians were very competent um, archers and horsemen. Uh, we know of, for example, the Parthian shot. Uh, you sort of pretend that you're leaving the battleground, you gallop away and then you turn around uh, on your horse and you shoot. Uh, so the um, Romans really were defeated very, very badly. Crassus um, was killed in battle and, um, as I said, they lost also their standards. Now, these standards were returned to Rome in a very friendly manner um, by the Parthians in 18 BC when Augustus uh, was the emperor in Rome. And once again, it's quite fascinating to see how in ancient times, like 
also in modern times, we see it again and again, a political defeat, a humiliating um, uh, loss is uh, turned into a great victory. Um, Augustus minted coins depicting uh, the Parthians kneeling in front of him and returning the lost standards. We know of various depictions of the Parthians in Roman art, um, always shown with sort of in a bearded, scruffy way, uh, returning the standards. And one of the most uh, well-known examples is, of course, the breastplate of uh, Augustus on his statue from Prima Porta, where uh, Augustus um, is shown wearing this cuirass, and on the cuirass, uh, the Parthian, the bearded Parthian, is returning the Roman standard. Rome was always keen to support rival kings to the Parthians. It always embraced wholeheartedly uh, puppet kings. And when the time was right for them, when internal problems uh, escalated within the Parthian Empire, they let these um, puppet kings go into Parthian territories, create havoc and um, destabilize the situation. I personally see a huge, huge parallel, very strong parallel with, to this day. We're so indoctrinated in the West um, by sort of the idea of Alexander, the might of Rome and the influence of Hellenistic culture, that we really don't think critically um, about what is in the East. I mean, after all, the Parthians ruled for almost 500 years, and they really were a threat to the Romans. This is sort of ignored, and I think really one should look at the whole history of the ancient Near East uh, with different eyes. If, if I had sort of written on my gravestone the person who drew attention to the Parthians and the Sasanians as equals to Rome, I would be very happy. Thank you very much for listening to me. I hope that you'll also um, become interested or have become interested in the Parthians and their importance. So thank you again and please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you.